A San Diego State student sexually assaulted off campus early yesterday morning. We've got brand new information about the suspect who has not been caught. Where is a place you can go if you've experienced domestic violence or sex trafficking? Plus, we're working for you to find out why this restroom in Balboa Park is all boarded up. San Diego's newest historical home has a huge Larry Himmel connection, and we have the old video clips to prove it. Will tropical storms become more frequent as the climate changes? We'll break down the science. In 1965, San Diego had a haircut crisis, and Kim Pernicano was expelled from school. We've got his Beatlemania memory. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Tonight, a man who sexually assaulted an SDSU student over the weekend is on the loose. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. I'm Marcella Lee. Thousands of students are back at school in the area where it happened. It happened uh, early yesterday morning and this is their second week of classes. CBS 8's Anna Laurel spent the day in the college area. Anna, what can you tell us? That's right, you guys. Look, it was just here on one of these streets in the college area just south of campus that police tell us a student got into what she thought was a ride share early yesterday morning. Instead, the driver sexually assaulted her. And tonight, that driver is still out there somewhere. SDSU students just starting their second week of class and already this weekend, a student says they were sexually assaulted off campus. And the person who did it has not been caught. I think it's horrible. Details are limited, but here's what we know according to San Diego police. An SDSU student says Sunday they got into a car they thought was their rideshare vehicle. They say the driver sexually assaulted them, then dropped them off in the area of 70th and Sarniac streets. Students are upset. I think SDSU doesn't take any preventative, like actual preventative measures to reduce the amount of sexual assault and assault in general. This sexual assault happened off campus and San Diego police are leading the investigation. I did ask SDSU what it does to make off campus safer and how they try to prevent things like this from happening. They pointed me to the SDSU safe app and university resources and initiatives related to sexual violence prevention. Students everywhere, but like young females who are scared, like they're scared to be walking around at night. Two weeks ago, I did a story with a student who lives off campus in the college area. She caught a peeping Tom looking into her bedroom window. She's angry that the city streetlights in her neighborhood are out. She says the college area is dark and unsafe. Before I even moved to a house um, over in this area, like I was well aware that um, lots of girls and just other students are targeted and especially with these streetlights being out I just think it makes us just so much more susceptible to that. Two weeks ago the city told me electrical crews are in the college area working. As of tonight those streetlights are still out. As for the sexual assault this weekend, here are some safety tips for using ride shares. Request your ride from indoors. Don't stand outside and wait. Check your driver's rating. Tell someone about your trip. Confirm the car, license plate, and driver before you even get in the car. Ask your driver the name of the person they're picking up. Your driver will know your name. Sit in the back seat and always know your surroundings. Yeah, we forget to do those things when we're in a hurry and or it's late at night, things like that. But uh, I did just get an email right before we came to air from the San Diego Police Department's crimes unit, sex crime unit. They're telling us now the student contacted police at 1.50 a.m. early Sunday morning. And here's the description of the suspect. It's really vague, but this is what they have. He's in his 20s with tan skin and an accent. Again, this happened right here off campus in the college area. That's where we are live tonight for CBS 8. I'm Anna Laurel. Guys. We're starting off the week with a potentially dangerous heat wave and a reminder tonight to stay hydrated, keep cool, and check on your neighbors, especially the elderly. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is here now with a first look at your forecast. Carlene, uh, how long is this heat going to stay around? Because today, if you walked outside, especially any time after 11 mm -hmm. this morning, you got punched in the face. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get punched in the face in the next couple <laughs> days. <laughs> you want to put it like that. Yeah, yeah the heat's going to be lasting. It's not going to be a long heat wave like the last one that we did have. So it's taking us all the way through about Wednesday. Day. And then the second half of the week, it's going to bring a welcome sight if you like some cooler temperatures into next week. Highs for today, that punch, well, that was 100 degrees. That was for Escondido, 103 for Ramon.
Ramona. The same for Valley Center. Triple digit heat saw for El Cajon and for Alpine as well as some warmer than usual temperatures in those 80s right along the coast. 106 degrees today in Campo actually tied the record back on this day and that was in 2021. So we are still in store for more heat and even an extension when it comes to the excessive heat warning. It goes all the way until Wednesday night now at 8 p.m. Previously it was through tomorrow night. We're still talking about highs between 112 to 118 across the desert, expecting those highs 90 to 104 across the inland valleys. And added to that, you still have that heat advisory, and that's for the mountains below 6,000 feet with the 90s and the one up to 102. So we really have to be careful the next couple of days. We'll go ahead and take a look at your highs tomorrow and that cool down we just talked about coming up. Marcella? Thanks, Carleen. Military officials are identifying the three Marines killed in an Osprey crash in Australia. Corporal Spencer Collart, Major Tobin Lewis, and Captain Eleanor LeBeau were based out of Hawaii. They were temporarily based in Darwin, Australia for a multinational training exercise. 20 others were hurt in the crash. Some of the other Marines involved were based at Camp Pendleton, though it's not clear right now how many and the extent of their injuries. We still don't know what caused the crash. Investigators will be at the crash site for the next several days. 60% of mass shootings were linked to domestic violence from 2014 to 2019, and as many as 8,000 people are trafficked in San Diego every year. That's according to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. CBS 8's Ariana Cohen visited a local center that helps victims. The team here at Your Safe Place is working every day to help domestic violence survivors become thrivers. So along this wall, we have pictures of former clients. Today, the team at Your Safe Place Family Justice Center gave me a tour of the facility in downtown San Diego. One in four women and one in nine men are victims of domestic violence, according to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. This San Diego agency provides confidential services to anyone experiencing domestic violence, family violence, elder abuse, sexual assault, or sex trafficking. The services are free for adults, seniors, children, and teens, regardless of age, gender, sexual orientation, income, zip code, or immigration status. They have rooms with emergency products for clients who come in. Whether it's hygiene items, toilet paper, um, diapers, clothing. And this boutique to provide clothing to those fleeing violence. We want to support our clients who are going to court, who may be going to a job interview. Your Safe Place also provides mobile clinics where the team goes out into different parts of the San Diego community to help people who can't make it to their downtown offices. And so instead of asking people to come here, we actually go out into the community really trying to specialize and help those who may be in marginalized communities or who may be in diverse communities who aren't necessarily able to readily access services. The presence of a gun in domestic violence situations increases the risk of homicide by 500 percent, according to NCADV. That's why the team here also helps with the process of obtaining a gun violence restraining order. And that allows us to remove that gun from that explosive situation before somebody is harmed. In September, they are opening a new Children Forensic Interview Center here, a safe space for children who have undergone trauma to feel comfortable sharing their experience with licensed professionals. We are here. We believe our clients. There is no judgment here. We want to make our survivors thrivers who can stand on their own two feet and break that cycle of violence and trafficking. If you or anyone you know needs help, we posted a link and phone number to your safe place at CBS8.com. I'm Ariana Cohen for CBS8. Thanks, Ariana. We have an update tonight on a story we first brought you earlier this month. A bike theft caught on surveillance camera and the whole thing went viral. You probably remember this guy. He was stealing the e-bike from a home's garage in Pacific Beach when the golden retriever who lived at the home came out. The guy stopped right in the middle of a crime to play with the dog. San Diego police say they've arrested a 42 year old man and they have recovered the e-bike so far. No other details have been released except we know that the dog's name now is Ace. So there you go. 
the guy tell the dog, tell your owners to keep their garage door shut. I mean, just the whole thing was crazy, but glad Ace is good and the yeah. bike is back with its owner. All right, CBS 8 is working for you to find out why a restroom at Balboa Park has been boarded up for months. A viewer contacted us after attending a class reunion near Morley Field. CBS 8's David Gopperton is working for you to find out when the restroom might open up again. A CBS 8 viewer emailed us after attending a high school reunion at Morley Field in Balboa Park. He wrote, the bathrooms are all boarded up. Some of the people were in their 80s and 90s. Now the closest bathrooms are about two blocks away. Any help? I checked out the area for myself along Jacaranda Drive, right next to the Morley Field bocce ball courts. And sure enough, the restrooms are all boarded up. Much to the chagrin of the local bocce ball players, too. Well, I wish it were open when we're out here playing bocce ball. It gets a little uh, warm and, you know, periodically uh, nature calls and you'd have to go. The players were eating lunch in a nice shady spot right next to the boarded up bathroom building. Well, I would probably not use it even if it was open, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. One of the problems in the bocce ball community is you're usually part of the elderly community, and they're the ones that need the restroom the most. And so sometimes it's very difficult for the elders to have to wait to go to the restroom. I reached out to the city of San Diego, and they sent me a statement saying in part, the comfort station in Morley Field along Jacaranda Drive was closed in February of this year to repair damage resulting from arson. City staff estimate that repairs should take approximately four to five weeks and will include testing for asbestos, lead, and mold. I think it should be open to the public, but it should also be monitored, perhaps locked at night, uh, opened in the morning, and have it checked out in the morning to see if it's clean. We'll keep working for you and let you know if and when the city reopens this restroom. In Balboa Park, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. Still ahead tonight, a trial date is set for former President Donald Trump. Plus, when will the updated COVID booster be available? We verify. And yes, we still miss our Larry Himmel every day here. Up next, the big honor he and his former home are getting tonight.